Hey everyone, Steve here. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, this is episode 2 in the Steal This Song Idea series. And like last time, I will show you a song idea and then afterwards I'll talk about the influences and how I went about writing the song idea. For this episode's idea, it was inspired by the band Algonon Cadwallader and I think that's how you say it. And they are an American emo or Midwest emo, however you want to label it, style band and they were active for about seven years and they split up I think in 2012. So what I'll do is I'll show you the idea and then I will talk about the influences that came from it afterwards. <laughs> So that was the idea there. I spent quite a while crafting the, the idea and I think it turned out quite nicely and I hopefully it does um, some justice to sound a bit like uh, Algonon Cad Cadwallala Cadwallala Algonon Cadwall Algonon Cadwallada <laughs> Jesus Christ I'm terrible with names I tell you <laughs> uh, So hopefully it sounds like them I made the two guitar parts as they have two guitarists in the band so let's get into more detail about where the influences came from and how I went about crafting the idea. So let's start with the tuning. Both of the guitars in this example are in the tuning of D, A, E, A, C sharp and E and this is a tuning I think they use quite often. Maybe it's the only tuning they use, uh, maybe some, um, some diehard fan can tell me more about that. It's a really nice bright sounding tuning and I think uh, the band Tiny Moving Parts also uses tuning so it's um, you know it's got that attraction to it definitely and it's become a, a staple of the uh, Midwest emo like American emo sound. So this tuning would give us the chord of um, open A add D uh, which is basically A major and add the D which is the fourth degree of A major. Um, I'll have the chart up on screen for you to try to clarify that a bit better for you. So for this tuning, because you're tuning up three of the strings from standard tuning, I recommend using maybe nine gauge would help. Uh, you know, so it's not so the tension's not so tight, and also the E is coming down to D, uh, so you're tuning down there. So maybe nines wouldn't be so good with that. So perhaps using a hybrid set uh, would help compensate for that. So then for my song idea, I threw a capo on the second fret for both of them. Uh, I recommend when you're tuning is to tune into the tuning without the capo one first and when you place the capo one uh, retune again uh, to make sure you're in tune. So sometimes you find the capo will displace the tuning a little bit. So with the capo on the second fret it's going to change the chord, it's going to change it to a B, open B, uh, add an E. So basically a B major with um, an E. As again I get that on screen for you. And you're most likely going to end up in the key of B major when you write something in this tuning either B major or E major because of this low ringing E and B major and E major are quite similar in the notes they use the only difference is the A uh, in B major it's an A sharp and in E major it's just a E natural so on to the idea so this idea was inspired um, from that album some kind of cat Cadwallader and it's the second song on the album as well so you know I had a great good listen to this and I watched a lot of live videos to look at how both guitarists play and also get an understanding of you know what kind of little nuances they're doing when they're playing and try to um, apply that to my idea so the first thing I did to help me um, find out where the notes are across the fretboard because I've changed the tuning is I went to this website called fretboard navigator and this was um, I found this because somebody messaged me actually um, asking me to check it out and see what I thought and this is really good for us like you know like math rock musicians or you know whatever one right like you know emo kind of songs that we're using you know different tunings a lot of the time this is very catered towards us and you also recommended me uh, down here which is lovely as well and you can put in any tuning and you can choose the key as well and then it'll place the notes across the fretboard for you so you have a visual representation of where all the notes are in a particular key and any particular tuning which is great i'll throw a link to this um, in the description for you so you can head over there 
the idea is four bars long, and basically it's just over two chords. So it's two chords, so two bars each. So first one is a B. The second one is an A. It's just cycling between those two notes there. So I had that bass line in mind first for that you know, driven drum beat and then I went about cre creating some kind of chords. So for this I used my ears as also this um, you know, this notes chart here to help me you know, guide. So it's a combination of the both. So for the first, I, first guitar just wanted some variation of um, the chords with that in that B so and as I constructed the idea I just wanted to have various variations of a B chord basically and you can see by the notes that I ended up using so the, the first chord there has you know a B a G sharp D G sharp D so it's like you know lots of the same note repeating which gives like a major six basically second chord is um you know sus two sus four basically it sounds nice and bright and the last one's just a, a general b b major chord there and like listening to the way that the guitarist plays uh you know one of them like sometimes you know play more of the chordal part and they'll connect all their little chord parts with um you know, little slides and little nuances between the chords. This is exactly what I try to do for my idea to try and replicate that. I must admit, I messed around quite a while. You know, I used this uh, chart to help me, and I also use my ears as well. That's always a safe way, um, and also you can develop your listening skills as you go along. You know, notes sound quite obvious when they're not within what you're going for, right? So I had those little nuanced ideas together based around three chords. So that was over the first of the B. And we switched to the A here. So I had a similar idea again with the chords. And um, you know, I wanted just some variation of chords as well, not just having the one chord. Kind of sounds like it's got the melody going on along with the chords. And again, they come up with some weird variations when you put the notes together, like A major six. And I had the run at the end. Just to signal that the you know the, the change is coming back to the uh, start of the, the idea again like that. So you may have noticed that um, actually there's no A in B major. So actually when it comes to the second chord, the key actually changes. And this was, uh, I didn't do this intentionally. It happened unintentionally. Like I said at the start with the E and the E major and B major, they're very similar in the notes they contain, um, you know, apart from that, that e, A natural in E major. And also in, um, you know, these two keys, they share common chords. Uh, they share the E major, G sharp minor, and C sharp minor. And what you can do with these three chords is you can use them as a bridge to jump between the two keys. So this is a really nice subtle way to change between two keys. And that's exactly what's going on here. Even though I changed from B major to E major, you didn't really, you know, it's very subtle, right? You don't really hear that there's a change going on there so much. And it sounds really nice, it flows very well. Again, as I said, that was uh, unintentional, so that's great. And a happy accident we should say. And then let's move on to the second guitar. So I approached this guitar part more of as, as a lead role. Um, watching the guitar player, uh, he does you know quite a lot of slides and some tapping and also uses natural harmonics quite often as well. So I tried to construct this part with those uh, three ideas in mind, you know, having slides, natural harmonics and some tapping. And also wanted it to complement the other guitar part, right? Which is one of the hardest things to do. So the way I did this was I'd use the notes chart and remember, I can remember I'm doing a B major to, um, you know, an A, a major chord there. So I know that I can use those notes that are in those two chords and I'd be quite safe. So this is exactly what I did, use my ear and the chart. So that was my, my slide idea after looking, consulting the chart, working around for a while. 
then I thought I'd have some, you know, tapping part. And end it on some lovely natural harmonics there. And uh, yeah, so I had those ideas there. And then for the second bar, I hear quite often that they both play like, you know, like same rhythmic idea, but they're playing different chords. And so you got this like nice, like uh, extended chord, you know, happening over the two guitars. So that's exactly what I did here when we came to the A. And again, I had the slide similar to the ascending on the first riff there. They both end on the same note as well, which uh, you know brings a union together, and then that signals that you know we're coming back to the start of the idea again, and it's um, you know these cycles, the cycles happening again. I did write this guitar part second, which I think is quite useful to know. So I did the first guitar part with like the you know the ha more the harmony in mind, and then the second guitar part was more of like a like um you know uh, like a lead part or something to you know really complement the first guitar part um so that's a good way you can approach that if you're thinking about you know writing two guitar parts and um so i tried not to be too theory heavy with this um you know idea you know trying to explain it but it's very hard to explain what i'm doing without using theory terms um so hopefully you can follow along you know i'm using a lot of your charts and uh, you know on screen stuff to to help uh, clarify what I'm talking about and if you do have any questions about any of the stuff that I've been going on about then um, you know please always leave a comment I do try and comment back and there's something I'm really interested in is songwriting and also like you know the theory behind it so I like to get quite geeky about that uh, so I'll, I'll explain more in detail there if you do want to hear more about that and um, yeah great band please check them out if you haven't already i think they've already got quite a few fans but i was instantly hooked after listening so thanks for the recommendation there guys and um as always uh, uh please leave recommendations please leave any recommendations for the next uh, steal this idea episode i'm um, you know open to many ideas i'm thinking more i'm going to do more of a more complex mafia idea next so give me some thoughts and as always thank you for watching you can find all of these materials over on my website the link will be in the description and thank you for your support and i'll see you next time goodbye